Welcome all to this tutorial. Today I will talk a bit about Network Manager, Network Manager Tools, and Persistent Network Configuration. First things first, let's go ahead and see how a non-persistent network configuration looks like. How would you perform it and what is it what does it what do I mean by non-persistent? Well, first first things first, non-persistent simply means that it will not survive a system-wide reboot and it will not survive the interface restart. So if you bring the interface down and up, the configuration will be gone. One of finding one of exam one such example would be just to add a different IP address. If I type in IP ADDR show, I will see that it has an IP address of 192.168.1.102, and that is the IP address which I would like to change. So go ahead and type in IP. A D D R and the help menu here is a bit different from the ones that you've seen before. You do not require any hyphens, rather instead you just type in help and there you have it. So here we can take a look at the help bar and what I'm interested in the most is the is the syntax of the command. So IP A D D R and then it says in the first line add change replace at the moment I would like to add and uh, well then I need to type in the interface address that I would like to add so 10.10.10.10 I'm just giving a random interface address here without much meaning but doesn't really matter I can now go ahead and type in dev and the dev will be ENP uh, 30s if I'm three s zero three s zero if I'm not mistaken. Just go ahead and see is it ENP zero s three. Okay, so my bad here. Zero s three. Uh, that's it. Operation not permitted. Why? Well, we are not. We are a regular user. We're not root. So let's go ahead and relog as root. No big deal there. Oops. There we go. I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste this command. So let's put it here. And now we can type in IP ADDR show. Now you can see that there is an additional IP address listed here. Notice that we did not delete the previous one. Uh, we did not use the change command, rather instead we have added a new IP address which is also assigned to this interface. Interfaces can have as many IP addresses as you like. It's, uh, I'm sure that there is a limit up there somewhere, but generally you can assign multiple, IP inter multiple IPs to a single interface. That is not a big deal. If you just take a look at the IP ADDR help, uh, you have some other options here such as uh, to save it or to flush it well sorry no this is not what I'm supposed to be looking at you have a command to add it to change it or to replace it for example you have this one here to delete it so interface address and then the dev let's go ahead and delete the one that we've just entered so IP ADDR del and it's ENP 0s3 what is next? We need to type, oops, sorry. This is 10.10.10.10 and then we need to type in device, so dev ENP0S3 press enter. Warning, executing wildcard deletion to stay compatible with old scripts. Yeah, this is a warning, not an error, so hopefully all worked out. ADDR show Excellent! The old one has indeed been deleted. It is gone while we have the new one that remains... Well, well, we didn't delete the new one, we deleted the... We didn't delete the old one, we deleted the new one, but you get the idea. I mean, uh, you would just change the IP address here that you would like to delete and type it in. No big deal, really. You can type in any IP address that you want that is needed for the interf that is needed for deletion, and that is all that you need to do there. No big deal. Anyway, that would be a typical example of, well, basic configuration which is non-persistent 
And it's not very reliable. I mean, you would usually use this kind of configuration to, set, to test something out, not to actually implement it. Let me just show you what I mean by it. So if I type in AP ADDR add, and if we type in IP, uh, oh, this is not what I need. Actually, maybe. Well, <laughs> there is a simpler way to do this. So it's NM CLI. This is a network manager client command line interface, which I'm going to talk about in just a moment. We're going to deal with it now. Not much, though, because there is a much wiser way of doing this, but let me just show it to you this way. So, connection. And now we would like to say down and just keep pressing tab and let's say ENP 0, zero S3 press enter uh, connection successfully deactivated but notice that we have assigned an IP address prior to this so if we type in IP ADDR show uh, this, this interface is down we no longer have anything there but if we go ahead and say up it's relatively fast uh, the interface is back up, but the old IP, but the one IP address that we have added is gone. Here, let me just show it to you one more time, really fast. Uh, there we go. Okay, so all see this. I have added the IP address, IP ADDR add, and then ten 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 dev and zero s three. Now we'll just type in IP ADDR ADDR show. And there you go. We have that second IP address there. Hopefully you can see it. Now when I do this, down, and if I do up again, you see the IP address is gone. So this is not the form of permanent configuration that you can actually make on the system that is valid or anything of a kind. This is this is just a temporary basis. That is all. For permanent configuration, you need to go into Etsy, where the config files are. Uh, sys config network scripts. Well, let's clear the screen and do... Uh, this is even worse, so ls is better in this case. And here we can see our, the interfaces. So the, we have the script for the first interface. It's ifcfg enp0s3. Let's go ahead and take a look in that script. Let's see what's in there. So vim ifcfg enp0s3. And here we have, well, I wouldn't say a ton load of configuration, param a ton load of parameters to configure. We have quite a few. We can add some of our own as well. But down below, you see the second to last option. It says device, and then you have, there you have the name of the device. And uh, that's the device. And then up above, sorry, a little bit up above, you have the name where it says N0S3, just above the UUID. Uh, what else do we got that is interesting to us? We do not have the DNS service, which is uh, odd enough. So let's go ahead and add our DNS servers here. Uh, how do you do that? Well, it's fairly simple. Uh, need the insert mode first. Well, it's fairly simple. There's nothing uh, really too complicated. There's not that much complication to it. First, let me just go ahead and check am I even connected to the internet. So quit. Uh, ping google.com okay so I am indeed let's just see IP ADDR show it does have an assigned IP address strange so LS am I picking up the right interface here I am okay so it's a virtual machine no big deal let's go ahead type in VIM IF uh, CFG ENP 0S3 and let's go ahead and type some of our own things here. Network Manager has already generated a file, which is here. Let me just show it to you just quickly before we... Oops. Mm. 
me just show it to you quickly. Uh, it's cat sc-resolve.conf. This is the file generated by the network manager. Clear. <coughs> Clear. Uh, this is the file generated by the network manager and you see the name servers, that's basically the DNS servers. They are typed in here, so 208.67.222.222. These are the open DNS servers which my virtual machine has picked up from my physical machine and my physical machine has in turn picked them up from my router where I have configured my default DNS servers. So I'm not using the DNS servers of my SP provider, rather instead I'm using Open DNS, uh, Open DNS, DNS servers or name servers, whichever way you wish to refer to them, no big deal. Anyway, if we go ahead and uh, go back to this file, you can also type in here where, the, well, let's go ahead. Well, we can type it in anywhere really. So on boot, yes. Let's go ahead and type in second to last. DNS1. That can be, for example, uh, I don't know the open DNS servers by heart now, sorry, but I can type in 8.8.8 .8 and I can type in DNS2 equals, uh, which one was it? 8.8.4.4. These are Google DNS servers which are public and free to use for anyone. Open DNS is also free. I tend to use it, uh, but you can also use Google. No big deal. You can use both of them uh, as you choose and please. So these are some of the things which we can configure here. It takes, I do believe that it accepts up to three DNS uh, three DNS servers, so you can type in DNS3 and add a third one, but this is really not necessary. If the second one fails, then something, then there is a serious problem somewhere, because the first one almost never, I mean almost never fails. Okay, so let's see what else can we change. We have the two DNS servers typed in here. Now I would like to configure a static IP address, so the first thing that I am going to do is, instead of DHCP here, I will go ahead and write uh, static and down below I will add a few lines as well. Uh, the first line that I shall add is NM, so network manager controlled, quite literally so, yes. And then down below I would also like to add the IP address, so IP ADDR equals to 10.10.10.0. We know that this is not the current IP address of the interface. And down below, what else would we like to type in? Well, the uh, so the mask. So type in net mask equals to 255.255.255.0. Uh, really, we just need these four lines, and that should be it. Although this is definitely not going to work for multiple reasons. But I just want to show you how a permanent configuration would look like, primarily because the router on the other side, the existing router, will not accept this IP address. That's one of the reasons why this wouldn't work. There are a few others, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm not looking to connect to the internet or anything of a kind. I just want to demonstrate. I just want to show you how can you enact permanent configuration which will survive system-wide reboots and which will survive interface restarts. That's the that's the point, that's the goal, that's the agenda of this exercise. Okay, now that we have that configured, let's go ahead and take a look, just take a look at your network manager here. It says wired, you can either disconnect it, reconnect it here. So it says here on, and then you can say off. On off, that should be fine. Usually, it will prompt you with the second with the second uh, network interface here, which you can choose, and the old one will be gone. The one that you've modified, you can choose it there. It will have the same name, so no big deal there. In addition to that, you can aside from that, you can actually type in uh, system ct ctl uh, network. Wait. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, system CTL restart net network manager. Go ahead and press enter. 
that will restart the network manager definitely and now type in IP ADDR show you will see that indeed we have 10.10.10.0 slash 24 on our interface if you don't get it straight away as I said just go ahead and click on your network manager here in the upper right corner and change it, it you will be prompted with it Another thing is to take into consideration is this slash 24. Let me just show you what that is. So VIM CFG. Uh, oh no, it's on that one. It's IFCFG. Enp. Okay, so you see this net mask that I am selecting now. And you've seen the slash 24 there back in that file. Hold on, let me just show you one more time so you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have slash 24 here, and then in this configuration file, you have 255.255.255.0. Well, this is exactly the same on most devices anyway, uh, in most places anyway, as me typing in, oh, come on, oh, I need insert, as me typing in slash 24 slash 24 represents two well maybe not the most correct of statements but sufficient for this tutorial two f slash 24 would basically represent 255 255 255 zero you have different prefixes here you can write 32 and then this mask down below would be different I'm not sure uh, which one would it be I think it would be 252 or something of a kind but don't hold my word to it there is a good deal of math behind this that you do you do need to perform some calculations there in order to figure it out but I'm just giving you an example so that you know what it actually means you won't have to bother much or at all with it during the Red Hat Certified System Administrator exam okay so let's go ahead and quit this file because I am honestly not going to alter it any further I'll just go ahead and quit it. So you see that the interface configuration did survive the interface, uh, us bringing the interface down and up and restarting the network manager as well. Not sure if I actually brought them down and up. Actually, we can just go ahead in case I failed to do this, but the interface, everything has been restarted by the network manager anyway. Uh, we can just go ahead and type in one of these commands, so nm. Uh, CLI connection down, ups, down, and now we will need it to go up. So we are stating network manager client a command line interface connection. We're stating the status up or down, and then we're stating the interface. So up and please give me the IP ADDR show you can see that the same IP address is valid again it stands there so whatever you do in that file is going to be permanent configuration uh, that will survive that will survive interface restarts so no worries there anyway I am running a bit short on time here so I will bid you all farewell until next tutorial where we shall deal further with this